My Legacy Short Movie Review. This picks up where Ultimatum ended. So yeah, I'm gonna have to be spoiling that, sorry. Basically, the secrets of the CIA are getting to the public, and the CIA has to clean up that mess. So, like a Catholic priest caught with a choir boy, they cover it up as much as possible. And this means killing people who work for them and, yeah, destroying evidence. So, suddenly we have Aaron Cross taking Dr. Rachel Weiss, I do not remember her character name, somewhere, I shouldn't really say where, with this very The Born Identity sort of situation with the top trained killer agent and the young woman who is not familiar with spy work. As the CIA tracks their every move and Edward Norton spins around himself, barking orders in all directions to a team of top-trained tech people. This happens about an hour into the movie, once it finally gets going. What happens before that? I guess we're supposed to get to know Aaron Cross? I don't really feel like we did, but I guess that's the idea. If not, I have no clue what that time was spent on. This takes very long to get to any kind of action. Which is really too bad, because once it gets there, Tony Gilroy really has a handle on the action. But there's just very little of it in the entire movie. The last half hour is very exhilarating. It was as exhilarating back when I saw it in Terminator 2 as well, but, you know, and that's one of the problems with this. The realism isn't completely present throughout. It goes into sci-fi elements of just gene manipulation happening right now on agents, which I just don't find as believable as there being agents like Jason Bourne out there. And then we have the various action stunts and the like, which just having ramping it up further from Ultimatum inevitably takes it into the unbelievable. You don't really believe that what you're seeing could happen without wire work and the like. In fact, Aaron Cross once or twice gets into what's almost parkour, and it just does not feel real. On the plus side, in the martial arts scenes, you can completely follow what's going on without them being at all slowed down. And you, you, you get more of a sense of Aaron Cross being a human being, a really effective human being, but still, sometimes things happen that he hadn't expected, and he suddenly has to improvise, and that's interesting. He's also more vulnerable than Jason Bourne, and certainly there is more chemistry, still not quite good chemistry, but still, better between Jeremy Renner, who actually looks like he's been through something brutal and who looks like he could kill someone more so than somewhat pretty Matt Damon and Rachel Weisz more than what there was between Matt Damon and Franco Potente. This movie seems like it's setting up for a new trilogy because it really doesn't forward the story. For all the plot that there is in this movie, it doesn't forward the story of the trilogy. So. Yeah, setting up for a new trilogy, which I think is a horrible idea, and just hoping that you'll like this one enough that you'll want to see more. And yeah, frankly, if this is all they have left, I say just leave it alone. You had some magic for three movies. That magic is gone. Matt Damon is sorely missed in this movie.
If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.